M0FXP, welcome back to the channel. Yesu FT991A have released new firmware, so let's load it. First thing we'll do is check what firmware we're running on our device. So all you do is turn it off. You can see it there in the background. Hold down the A and B and the AB button. So these two here. Hold them down and turn on. And there you are. Now it looks to me like they're only changing the main firmware, which is the top one, minus 2.04. So let's have a look at what uh, what they've changed. But also, if you look at the back of the radio above, grab your USB cable, which looks like a printer cable, and it plugs right in the middle here where I'm circling in the square black port. So you'll be ready for the firmware update. The other thing you'll need to do is once you're on the files section of Yesu, so you've got Yesu there, go to files, yeah, just move my radio down a bit, so they are, that's description, and then files, scroll down, and download the driver if you haven't already got it, so you've got the USB driver here for Windows, and beneath it for the older models, just click that and run that XC, and you'll have the driver reboot, uh, and do not connect the cable to the PC until after you've added the driver. Then we'll go to the firmware update. Click that and it's downloaded it here at the top. Let's have a quick look at the folder. This is the one. It just says main. You've got the SFL file, which I would say that is the file that you load. And then you've got some the instructions here. And see the XC underneath. You might as well open that while we're here. That is the firmware loader. It's called the YSF W024. Double click that until it opens. There it is there. And let's have a quick look at the in instructions, but we are getting close to completing it. You basically put the radio into firmware mode, main firmware mode, and there are different, I think there's three different modes. There's main, DSP, and, and I think out the, the front screen, but this is just for the main. And then you just load it. Uh, so obviously be very careful, make sure you've got the good power supply, a good lead connected so you can't go wrong and carefully follow the instructions provided by Yesu. Remember, I'm doing this, but I am not Yesu. Follow their instructions. Now they do give you a very firm warning saying that this is down to your, you know, your responsibility, okay? And it is for the 991A model, not the 991. So let's read the instructions. Number one, confirm that the radio is turned off and disconnect the DC cable and all other cables from the transceiver. Number two, connect the transceiver unit USB terminal and personal computer USB port via a standard commercially available cable. Number three, the FT991A virtual comm driver must be installed. We know that. Number three, uh, number three, confirm that the external power supply is turned off and connect the DC cable to the transceiver while pressing and holding the TXW and the split key. So let's just find that. Here it is here. There are the two keys either side at the bottom of the VFO, just where my fingers are now, okay? Oh, just the two fingers there. Okay. Keep reading on. And what it's saying is you can turn the power on to the device, but do not turn the radio on. This puts the radio into program mode. Number four, execute the program that you can just see beneath as well, that we just opened. Click configure port. Use enhanced COM port when using a USB cable. So there you go. Click that. Browse and, and then select that SFL file that we just downloaded. And then right, scrolling down, click the right, transfer will happen. Wait for the OK, click OK, turn off the external power supply units power. Turn off the external power supply units power, disconnect the USB cable from the transceiver, da 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 da. And then you've got DSP instructions and then you've got the, let's keep going down, TFT. But as far as I can see, we don't have to do that. Right, well, I'm just going to do this live while you're watching me. Um, I'm going to follow the instructions, so if it gets a bit boring. Now, the other thing is, if you lose my audio, don't worry, because once you start connecting cables, the audio can be affected, um, and I'll try and keep the audio good. But let's just do it one at a time. So number one, we've already connected our cable to the radio, but although it's not plugged into my PC yet, it's just here. 
and yeah I've got full control of the power so I'll turn the radio off first that's the actual radio and then I'll turn off the power supply so now I'll plug the USB cable that's already in the back of the unit the 991 into my PC and that's because I already have the USB driver installed so now I'm going to turn on the power supply I'm not going to touch the power button whilst holding down those two T X W and split key buttons So hold the buttons down make sure you hear them click and then I turn them on I'll turn the power and I did hear some some beeping happen and so if I go into my ports right click device manager hopefully you can see that I'll just show you what I'm doing here right click on the window squares at the bottom device manager then you'll get this window open at the left there's ports double click ports and then go to oh it's there look silicon labs and we've got com6 and com9 so i'm guessing it's going to be com6 we'll soon find out right so that's selected so now we're going to open go back to that program it does say that when you're in this mode that the display stays blank so then we double click the program that's this one here that we downloaded I know that it does say use the enhanced com com port which is the top one com6 on mine you may have a different number so we'll now click configure select com6 which is enhanced and it actually says enhanced click OK then we're going to browse well it looks like it's already got it there already look 2.06 that's fine so now let's hit right it says here I'll actually get some instructions when you click on this button the firmware writing process begins before clicking on the button follow the steps disconnect the DC cable connect a USB cable connect the DC cable while pressing TXW and split so it just gives you the instructions again we're just going to click right it says now writing fingers crossed now uh, oh yeah you can see it it's gone green and we'll soon be on 2.06 I always like it when we when we haven't added when we add firmware to an older radio because this hasn't been updated for a while I'm sure so let's have a quick look back at oh, actually I don't want to touch anything because I don't want to um, make my radio break but I'm pretty sure that even if you get it wrong you just run it again but you know I wouldn't take my word for that the FT 991 it's a fantastic device you know I you know I, I always go back to it because I can turn it on I can do everything in one box I really like C4FM C4FM has got lots of uh, you can I can connect my open spot to the C4FM part of that device and then I can go on DMR D star fusion if I'm using the open spot 3 or the 4 pro I can cross mode and even the other open spots will cross mode to DMR as well um, just for the budget ones even the, the I think even the original open spot one does that so right we're getting there looks like we haven't failed so thanks very much for watching my YouTube channel I am just someone that's actually um, inexperienced and just just learning in front of you uh, I don't do firmware updates every day you know I'm just like you I get nervous and wonder if I'm gonna do it right but this because it's just the main this has been straightforward but if you were going to do all the other two it's the same process so we click OK um, so I'm happy with that now what's it say after that so at the end of it we did that part click OK turn off the external power supply and disconnect the cable so I'll do that it's the power supply off and then I'll disconnect the USB cable um, press and hold the power key whilst the FM list while pressing the FM list key on the transceiver main panel turning on the the transceiver's power reset button so it wants me to reset 
straight away. So turn on the external power supply, press and hold. So FM list key. So where's FM list? Let's find that. That's that one there. Just here, look. So we're going to hold that and then turn on. Oh, we need to turn the power back on. <laughs> um, so. Power's back on. And then F list and turn on. Okay, it's definitely reset because <laughs> everything's different now. And now let's do the, let's turn it off. Hold down the AB, turn it on. 2.06, how good is that? 2.06, yeah, I know it's a bit blurry, but it's definitely there. And I, I need to reactivate my... That's it. My waterfall, it, it defaults to the... Why am I doing the fastest steps? Or the slowest? Not very really busy today. Look, 100 watt power when you reset. I've got RT system software. If I can find the waterfall. Look at, that, look at the, how long that list is. There is waterfall. Spectrum colour. Display mode. Select. Waterfall. And back out. Ta -da. If I fire up my hotspot, <laughs> so we'll just go band seventy sems uh, mode. We'll go to C4 FM and it's 438.575. And enter, and then we'll go 438.575. Enter. And look at that. Take 35. A bit broken. But um, that's C4 FM. Slightly out. There you go. I'm sure that the they've made the AB better on this. If I turn it down and go to the B band, look, we can go to band. Turn that up. And then we go A. Yeah, I'm just tinkering, but so we have got A and B mode. Look, A and then B. It is working. Remember, this is a single receive radio, but it keeps saying A here on the top. So that's the only thing I've noticed. Keep saying A. Split mode. If we go to split mode, okay, and that's fine. So VFO B is here. And yeah, you can swap them back and forth, and it does say A oh, and B. X-ray. Come out of split mode. See if I can get a. Oh, this is Echo Romeo One Shot of Whiskey. Echo Romeo One Shot of Whiskey. I might, that that looks like I'm probably cross moding to um to DMR. Echo Romeo One Charlie Whiskey M Zero FXB. I Didn't quite get through on that one. 
the waterfall looks nice. Thank you. Lots of buttons to push on the 991. Um, M0FXB calling for an audio tech mic 0 Fox X ray Bravo. See if anyone comes back to me. M0 FXB returning. Oh, thanks very much. Just got the FT991 here. I've loaded the new firmware that came out today, um, version 2.06 on the on the main section. Uh, so I thought I'd give it a quick audio check. Uh, name's Andreas, M0 FXB, Southwest UK. Back to you. Kilo Julia 5, Mike, right? I want to change on 878. These are here coming through clear as we work with the phone with each other. KJ5, then X, back in. Oh, thanks so much. I just wanted to uh, see if I could catch KB2, KBD as well. Um, I'll put it back to you, and then, it, then if I could go off and uh, on this on this channel and see if I can get Ken there. Uh, uh, back to you for a final. And thanks very much for coming back to me. Oh, thanks very much. Um, that means that you're in the end of this video <laughs> where I've just loaded the firmware right at the very end. Uh, I'll be loading it in about, I don't know, 10 minutes. Uh, nice to meet you as well. Um, I wonder if Ken's there. Over to Ken if you're there. No joy. I'll just a quick chat with Ken because he does know his his Yaso equipment very well. Uh, KB2, KBD, or is it KBD, KB2? I always get it mixed up. Are you there, Ken, M0 FXB? And then we'll end the video. So I do think there's a slight bug there with the AB, um, but it's still, a lot easier because before the A, B button, as far as I remember, could be wrong, only worked when we were in split mode. I, I've just watched one of my older videos showing that. And so that why people would push the A and B and nothing. And they would like, why, why, why am I not changing from A to B? And I think it does now. Bye for now, 7-3.